Okay, it's been a minute since I've made a YouTube video about a year, maybe? Something like that? I don't know. It takes a lot of time to make a YouTube video, especially the editing part. And it's not that I don't have things to make YouTube videos about. I've just been really busy doing a lot of Twitch streaming. Um, but now, I'm not doing as much Twitch streaming. And I wanted to make some more videos. I got the hankering. So I'm going to try and bust this one out. I uh, have another one this month before the end of the year. And then put them out on a semi-regular basis. We'll see. What I have for you today is uh, a little time-lapse drawing with a Q&A. Um, I asked on my various social medias for some questions to answer. So I'm going to do that. And I also came up with some like frequently asked questions as well. So I'm going to get going on those. The first one that I thought I would answer is, what is a must-have art supply? And I'm going to have to go with just tried and true pencil and paper. Um, ideally, a pencil with an eraser on the back. You really can't go wrong with that. It's like probably the easiest art supply to just like find and also to use. You can fix your mistakes. You can draw lightly, you can draw darker, you can do big wide lines if you tip it sideways, you can do like really tight lines. So I'm gonna have to go with the pencil on that one. I don't draw with pencil very often, but I do in this video actually. Um, so I guess sometimes I do, but usually I like to draw with ink. But if I had to pick one, I'd probably go with the pencil. Next question is who inspires you the most? Lately I've been super, super, super into Daniel Warren Johnson, um, his art just is so, it's like cranked to 11 all the time. Really awesome um, value control. It's got a lot of awesome influences in it from French comics, superhero comics, manga. Um, just the way he renders and uses ink is awesome. I also really like screen tone and he's pretty awesome at using screen tone to do cool stuff. So I'm really into his work lately and um, Along those lines, also, I um, am into Matthias Bergara and James Heron, and I'll put some links to their socials in the description. But those are the those are the number ones right now. As far as my favorite artist goes, that's a tough one. Of all time, it's kind of like a basic answer, but honestly, like Carl Kopinski, his work always does it for me. However, it's like not. I don't know. It's like, I like his painting. I like his drawing, like his sketching. It's all cool. But I like wish I could see him like apply those skills to other things, you know? But someone asked like who my favorite comic artist is. So we'll go to that later. But I don't know. For, for like an artist that I really enjoy looking at their art, I think it might have to be Carl. Another question. How much do you draw? I have drawn every day for at least a year or two. I've only been drawing for like three and a half ish years. I think I've been drawing every day for almost two years now, probably. Um, and it varies. Usually it's between like three hours this year. It's been like between three hours and eight hours. Um, it just kind of depends sometimes more sometimes less. I, I guess it, probably the average would be around five to six, but some days I can really just sit down and get lost in it. And then I, all of a sudden it's like nine, 10 hours later. Other days, I just kind of have to squeeze it in. Um, but it definitely helps in every way when you just draw a lot. So I try to make that like a priority in my life. My childhood favorite art comic. Wait, childhood favorite. Childhood favorite comic. <laughs> um, when I was younger, I read tons of Amazing Spider-Man. I think that's kind of what got me into comics. I got one of these essential black and white volumes of Amazing Spider-Man. It wasn't even like number one or anything. It was just like, I don't know, random issues. But I really like that. It was awesome. Um, it's like still some of my favorite comics. Um, I read through a lot of them recently and like they don't intrigue me nearly as much, but it makes sense because they're for kids. But I do still really like them. Um, the art is fantastic and there's a lot to learn from them. Um, and, you know, it's just it's spider-man you know what's not to like but i also really liked i think before that i read a lot of like funnies um calvin and hobbs far side 
um, a little bit of Garfield. I had like the big books full of those, like collected editions of Calvin and Hobbes or the Far Side Gallery. Um, and I think Calvin and Hobbes, I want to go back through and do some studies of because the inking style is like really phenomenal in those. Um, and there's some really actually beautiful panels and even like the watercolor and everything is like super nice. And it's like really clever, funny comics. So I can check those out again sometime soon, but those are like probably some of the earliest besides, you know, just the classic sixties, seventies, Spider-Man comics. My favorite current manga artist. That one's super hard for me because I don't really read anything that's coming out right now that I know of. I'm trying to think of like current manga that I'm reading and there, there's like nothing. <laughs> um, all the manga I read is like pre-2000s for the most part. Um, if I answered it, that question, um, it would probably be Goseki Kojima of Lone Wolf and Cub. I really like, or um, Shiro Masamune, um, I think that's how you say his name. Forgive me, Japanese speakers. Um, but he did Ghost in the Shell, and I, the Ghost in the Shell manga is awesome. I love it. It's got, you know, some really detailed, cool scenes, but, like, it has that awesome manga thing where they, like, just all of a sudden throw in super cartoony, goofy faces. Um, another great screen tone user. I love all the screen tone in those. So that one's probably got you know my all time but as far as current i'm like drawing a blank i don't think there's any like super current manga that i'm reading i'm like looking behind me at all my comics right now i don't think there's anything yeah no <laughs> sorry uh this question is how do you make money i'm assuming doing what i am currently doing um, the answer to that is with a lot of hard work. I don't really take days off. I try to work a little bit every day on something related to art or selling art or running a Patreon or, you know, engaging an audience, making YouTube videos, streaming on Twitch. Um, you know, I have a discord, I have a shop where I sell stuff. I try to take commissions and, um, all the social media and Twitch and everything is a way to get more eyes on me and more potential buyers. And it can be exhausting. Um, I know at some point it will just be easier. There will be enough people where I don't have to try as hard. Um, and it will just be steady growth just from doing what I always do without having to really push it. But as of right now, it's kind of like managing a bunch of spinning plates and trying not to let any of them fall, which can get you know tiresome. But um, if it allows me to just draw for a living, then it's totally worth balancing them all. So... Um, but yeah, I think, you know, in order of income, I would say Patreon is number one, then my shop selling like originals or merch or whatever. And then after that is probably commissions. And after that is, I don't know, like just various like Twitch subscriptions or, you know, ad revenue or donations from just stuff like that. It's probably where all that comes from, but it, it is worth noting. Like I do that every day, all day. And I have been for like almost a year now and I'm still not making enough to break even. I'm still losing money. Um, I'm just living off of savings. So hopefully I can get to a point before my savings run out where I can, you know, live off of that. We're getting closer for sure. Every day it gets a lot closer, but or every month, but we're not quite there yet. So, but that's, that's my current plan is just to keep growing all those streams because they have had pretty steady growth. So if they keep growing at this rate, we'll be there eventually. So um, this question then is, how do you feel about drawing still life? I don't mind it at all. Um, there's a lot to learn from just rendering a thing as it sits. Um, do I ever set up objects on a table and try to just replicate it? No, that's not really... It's kind of like an atelier classical arts kind of thing, and there's nothing wrong with it. I think it's good. Um, but a lot of those same skills you can get from drawing anything. Um, and I do draw from life fairly often, especially like I used to do this all the time. I'd go and before COVID, I'd sit in cafes and just draw my surroundings or um, just draw the chairs and the environment. And that's really good to teach you like how to put stuff in perspective and um, how to consider everything in the scene you got to think about all the textures and all of the lighting and all of the shadows and make decisions about it all 
And um, I think that's like a much more natural way to draw the world and, you know, remember it than to just put together these forced dioramas of, you know, a fruit and a cup and a whatever piece of glass and a spoon on a table like that. Sure. It's great. You'll learn a lot from drawing those simple objects, but there's so many simple objects just out in the world that I would rather draw that I'm more likely to need to draw in the future. Um, then, you know, like I can draw a banana if I, if I can figure out how to draw cars and things, you know, and render those or draw like a table with chairs around it and food and people sitting at it. I feel like I can probably figure out how to draw a banana in the future if I need to. So that's kind of my idea. I'm not, I'm not opposed to it, but, um, I've never had like an assignment to just throw stuff on the table and draw it. So, uh, what is your ultimate art motivation? Hmm. That is uh, a tricky question. Um, it's very open-ended. Uh, people ask me a lot of times like what my end goal is. I guess that's not really um, this question, but it kind of goes along with it. I just want to like make cool stuff that I care about. Um, and, you know, hopefully that teaches other people about things of the world and that other people care about. Um, I really like the idea of like entertainment. I think it's very valuable. And art for me is extremely entertaining to consume and um, all of its various uses in the entertainment world, like movies and comics and um, TV shows and posters, everything like has art in it in some um, aspects. So I like entertaining people. I like telling stories. And so that's something that motivates me is like getting more skill to be able to tell better stories and entertain more people. Um, but like my goal is to just be able to make what I want and make money from it and not have to worry about anything else. So those are sort of related, I guess. Next question. What is on the Christmas list? This one came from my mother. Um, I already sent her a list. Don't worry, but I'll give you some brief, brief rundown of like what I asked for. I think I've asked for a couple years in a row now. Number one is the sketchbook I'm currently drawing in. Um, well, sort of. Usually I use the ring bound cottonwood art sketchbooks this is the c1a i think usually i just use the c1 from cottonwood arts which is ring bound and i like the ring bound because i can take just the page i need fold everything to the other side of the rings and then flip it sideways so that the page i'm drawing on is flat on the table and there's no edge to fall off of and there's no like binding on the left or the right so i'll put the top I really like that, but then, you know, when you flip through the book, every other drawing is upside down. Um, but I really like these sketchbooks. They're really smooth. They're toned. Uh, every media works on them. There's no bleed, so you can use both sides, get the most of your money worth. And they almost always have a sale. So, you know, you can get these books for like 19 bucks, and it's, I think, 70 pages all said and done. Um, and I just cram them full. But, you know, I go through probably one a month at least, so it's nice to <laughs> get stocked up every Christmas. So... This, however, is the um, glue bound and it lays flat, which I actually like a lot because it's not so high off the ground that you're like falling off a big ledge when you get to the right side. And it's nice to not have to worry about running out of room. You can kind of just keep drawing over the center fold, do these extra wide drawings. And by the end of this, I have, you know, a whole page full of orangutans. So I don't know, but I always ask for sketchbooks just because paper is the thing I go through the most and the thing that... I spend the most money on so I always ask for that I usually like to get some sort of ink refill because I go through a lot of that too I like the platinum carbon ink let's see other than that just general like erasers refills things like that I'm really low on screen tone right now so I was talking about earlier with like the manga and Daniel Warren Johnson it's super expensive and to buy it in the states you have a really limited selection so I try to you know get it from Deleter in Japan but it cost a ton to ship it it's like five bucks a sheet so that's something i don't like buying for myself so that one definitely is on the christmas list <laughs> other than that just you know general consumables um and lots of lots of comics and things that i can't find digital versions of i don't really like digital anyways but um a lot of old stuff has not made it online yet and i just want to be able to look at it for reference and inspiration so i'm always looking for it and another question, do you like eggplant parmesan? And I gotta be honest, I don't think I've ever had eggplant parmesan. If I have, I don't remember if I liked it or not. 
I like Parmesan. I don't know if I like eggplant, but with enough like salt and garlic, I feel like anything is tasty. So yes, maybe, probably, unsure. I don't know. Maybe. I think that's all the questions. Thank you to anyone who submitted. Um, if there's any more, feel free to drop them in the comment section. I'll do another Q and A video one day. If you uh, want to support me, like I was saying, I'm you know doing this full time, trying to make my job. Check out my Patreon. Whatever I have switched to, I, I might be switching to a different platform for that stuff soon. But check it out. It'll be in my link tree, which I will post below. You can also find my shop and my uh, social media. Follow me all those places, and I will try to get another video out soon. I want to do some more Sumi Nagashi videos that aren't um, so janky, so I'm going to try to um, try some more fun word stuff with that, and we'll have that out in the next month or so. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.